this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you three weird rituals that I personally do that have skyrocketed my vibration. I'm not just gonna tell you, I'm gonna actually show you and you can then apply them into your life to skyrocket your vibration as well. Welcome back to another video. My name is Aaron and I help people expand their consciousness. Now in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you those three weird rituals that I use that have skyrocketed my vibration. And when I look at little things I do, like for example, like this isn't one of those, but I'm very protective of my own vibration. And the reason being is because our vibration is in a way like an antenna that attracts to us a certain reality. We, we see life literally through a certain lens and through that lens, we then uh, experience our reality based on which lens we are wearing. So being protective of your vibration is being aware of what you are thinking, feeling, and doing and what you do that affects how you think, feel, and do if that makes sense. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you those weird things that I do. Uh, my vibration raised a lot back in 2012 when I went through a spiritual awakening. I learned how to meditate. I'd say that's one of the important things as well. By the way, these are what I was showing you here. These are called blue blockers. These are blue blockers. These make it so that when I'm on my computer over here, it blocks out blue light because when the computer screen is uh, you're looking at a computer screen, your mind will think that it's noon. That's how the frequency of the screen makes the mind think that it's noon. So even if I'm looking at that, it's like seven or eight at night, my mind's like vibrationally saying, it's noon, it's noon, it's noon, stay awake. And sometimes it's harder to fall asleep. So those blue blockers help. I wear them even though it's the morning right now and I'm, I'm recording this episode or this, this video. So now let me show you a little bit about uh, the different, the weird rituals. Now. There's a story I have about this. So I have this rule that every morning I wake up, by the way, I am in, um, staying at this place right now. I'm at the, I'm waiting for my house. I have a house that I'm gonna be moving in soon and until then I'm right here. So just to give this video a little bit of context, even though I'm traveling, I still do these weird uh, rituals I'll be talking about. So one of the first ones has to do with meditation in the morning. It's my morning routine. Meditation in the morning and I will not, almost like not talk to anybody until I meditate because I want when I wake up in the morning to be the most pure vibration of uh, it's when our mind is most susceptible to influence so in the morning I do not check my phone I do not have deep conversations about anything I wake up and I meditate and let me show you a little bit now here's another weird kind of thing like okay the weird part of it is that there were times that I used to live at my old house which you, you've probably seen that house before in um, on uh, my old YouTube videos there were times that I would be sleeping and what would happen is somebody would come and they would knock on the door it'd be like a worker that needed to be like doing something and what I would do is I straight up if I hadn't meditated yet, I would not get the door. I'd almost pretend like I'm not home. I'm not saying you have to do this, but I'm very protective of right when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is meditate. And if I wake up and someone's banging on my door, I'm not gonna go throw on pajamas and answer it unless it's, like, unless it's an absolute emergency or something. But in general, when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is meditate, which means I sit in a sacred space for about 10 minutes, observe my thoughts, and that's one of the most powerful uh, parts of my day when you wake up in the morning you are drifting from that of the uh, the theta state of being deeply in deep asleep and or delta would be the deep sleep then theta which is a very deep meditation state and also when you're asleep and then you you drift into alpha and beta and that little 30 minute window when you wake up in the morning is the most powerful time to prime your mind and if you prime your mind to observe your thoughts rather than react to your thoughts you're in a very powerful place but if when you wake up you're having some deep conversation or some surface level conversation or you are doing something on your phone you're stimulating your mind for stimulation and reaction now here's another kind of weird thing I do not and do not prefer to use and to sleep in beds where the head of the bed faces north or my head would be facing north if my head is facing north this is what I actually uh, listened to a video for a sad guru if you guys know who he is he's like an enlightened guy from India and uh, this really resonated with me but when your head is facing north, it brings the iron in the body to the head. And when the iron goes towards the head, it's like, it's, it's not good for mental clarity. And you may find yourself feeling more cortisol, more stress. And it's not that it's horrible if you do it one or two nights, but the idea is don't get a house 
where you're gonna live in for months if your head is gonna be facing north. So what I do is when I'm at different hotels, which I'm at right now, one thing I like to do is make sure my head's facing north. Now for some reason my head wasn't facing north, maybe I might sleep at an angle so my head's not completely north. Now, once again, I don't think any of these things have complete power over us, but I believe that I'm gonna use that awareness to my advantage. So something else I have that might seem a little bit weird is this right here, that you can see, this is called an earth pulse. These are two magnets that go underneath the bed, one's underneath the head, and then one's underneath in the middle, and they're kind of, they're these little magnets that go at a frequency that makes it so that the frequency around the energy field of my body is similar to that of the earth. Because when we used to sleep outside back in the day, back in the day, Paleolithic times or something, uh, or just camping, when you're camping, you're more in tune with the earth. And when you do that, you sleep better, you're more rejuvenated. So all in all, that's my morning routine. I wake up every morning, I won't really talk to anybody. I will just meditate, make sure I meditate before I get into reaction mode or you know having to do things. If someone knocks on my door, I might just leave it there because more important is my vibration for my whole day than it is of me answering some mail or something like that. So that might seem a little bit weird, but nonetheless, that's what I do. So something else I wanted to share as well has to do with that of, um, there's this thing that I've been doing recently and just in general, and it has to do with waking up at three to five in the morning. Now this is the thing. I believe that they're in, just in general, they're showing this with what's called the noosphere. There is an, there is an electromagnetic energetic field around us and around the collective consciousness of all of us. So if you look around, you can't see necessarily all the, which you could call the energetic thought forms or energetic um, energy going around people. However, we're a part of a collective consciousness. And when we think of certain thoughts, we are projecting those thoughts out. And when you have a mass amount of people, when you have, you know, I'm looking around right now at this view, all of these people, there's certain events that will trigger a mass amount of energy. And in a way that can have an influence on us. Now, here's the thing. When you are, there's different times of the day when there's a different energy that I guess you could say is a little bit more uh, adaptable to us because there's the collective energy of our city that may be in certain modes. Now, this is what I mean by that. When you wake up between three to five in the morning, maybe you've seen a lot of things before about waking up at three in the morning and the veil is the thinnest. Three to five in the morning, most people in where you live are gonna be asleep. And when they are asleep, in a way you could say the veil is the thinnest because there's, a le there's the least amount of thoughts that are in a way being emanated out of people. And because of that, there's a more of a purity there. So to meditate between three to five in the morning, doesn't mean you have to meditate for two hours straight, but to get up at that time and to be thinking and feeling the emotions of what you want to feel, the the veil is the thinnest at that time. So if I ever wake up, even just naturally at that time, I'll put my hands over my heart like this, and as I fall asleep at night, what I will do is I will feel those emotions, or as of, if I wake up in the morning between three to five, that's when I'll do that as well. And in a way, as far as vibration goes, throughout my day, I do things in a certain cycle. So I get up, my energy is the most creative in the, in the morning, and I do what I love, which means I'm making a video like I'm doing right now. And what happens is as the day goes on, there's certain times that are good for certain things. About one or two o'clock, it's really good for elimination of the body. I think I learned this from my friend Bridget Nielsen. Um, and it has to do with, uh, she's a YouTuber as well. It has to do with the different phases of the day and the different phases of of uh, what uh, the mass amount of people are doing as well. So around one or two o'clock, it's good for for um, for like, ex not exfoliating, but like letting go, letting go of energy. That's why working out can be good. You're letting go of energy in a way. And uh, when you wake up in the morning, it's the creative work and it's very productive up until like 10 to two. This doesn't work for, this doesn't have to be the truth for everybody. But for me, I found that it's very beneficial and it has to do with understanding the phases of the day in a way. Now. The last weird thing I wanna talk about when it comes to uh, skyrocketing my vibration, I would say a lot of my success has come from reprogramming my subconscious mind. And reprogramming my subconscious mind for me involves 
that of, um, of as I'm going to bed at night using that hack that I talk about. And I actually have a meditation for it as well and it's the most powerful, it's called the most powerful meditation for manifesting while you sleep. What the, it is is as you fall asleep at night, you feel the emotions of what you want to feel and you imagine that that's who you are. Now something that might seem a little bit weird that I do is, I haven't even planned out this by the way, but let me show you something real quick. Those right there. Those are three different crystals. This right here is rose quartz. This right here is lapis lazuli, and this is citrine. These are in the pillow, and then this, where'd it go? I had this, this right here is rose. This goes actually on my heart as I sleep. Now, the purpose behind these is I put intention into that of the crystals, and I put intention for uh, whatever I, you know, feeling in a high vibration and creating an energetic field around my body. Something else I do as I go to bed, which might seem a little bit weird, is I put an electromagnetic, like I visualize an energy field that goes around my bed that keeps a high vibration there while I sleep. And I set the intention that I sleep amazing, that I remember my dreams in the morning. And I do these energetic things that, that I believe has a very powerful effect on my life. Now here's the thing, doing this one day, you might not notice a huge difference. Now, as you begin to do something in the space that you're living in, consistently over and over and over and over again, it begins to build that electromagnetic energy. So when I had a house that I used to live in, people used to tell me all the time, this house has such a high vibration. It's such a high vibe when I come in here. Reason being is one, I would put, I have a lot of like black tourmaline and different crystals around the whole house so the house is gridded out. Two, I put a lot of intention into the house. And uh, I put intention and, and to where it's like I'm amplifying that energy and uh, every single day I'm doing that around my bed. So it's almost like by day 100, I don't have to do it as much because there's a momentum there of that energetic field that I've been putting around for 100 days straight, you see. So these are all different things I do. I'll show you one or two other little things. And that is, uh, this right here, sage. Sage has been used for a long time to clear out energy. Let me get more in the light. Clear out energy. So what I do is I'll light this, I'll clear out my energetic field. If somebody comes over, I'll uh, normally cleanse the space as well. That's something that I do. In general, there's a lot of weird things as well that I haven't really shared before. There's a playlist right here you can watch. It's on, uh, there's one of the videos, it's like seven weird things, uh, seven more weird things about your vibration that you don't even know about. And there's things where I talk about the energetic fields that we live in, how different things affect us. Um, one other thing is if people ever argued at my house, I'd almost make them like leave the house because I don't want that energy inside my house. Doesn't mean you have to be anal and super protective and worried. It just means you're aware. And when you're aware of these things, you just have these boundaries. And these boundaries sometimes are a very good thing. But if you want to learn more about vibration, go ahead and click the playlist right here. Also that meditation to listen to as you fall asleep at night. Listen to it every single night for 21 days. Watch how your life begins to change. The repetition is what really does it. Other than that, Share with me any weird rite rituals you have below as well. I'd love to know and love to see them. Other than that, as always, peace, much love, and namaste.